Lord, may you protect your servant, Leroy. Please keep him safe from his police training. And grant us the wisdom to accept his decision. At least this way, Dad, I can change things. Get out of my house! Out there, it is us and them. That's how it works. Stop, please! I'm out there with no backup! Sometimes I think the earth needs to be scorched. You plant it, so something good will come of it. Hi, this is Lee John. Please join myself and Tyrone Huntley where we will be discussing his role playing Lee John in the Steve McQueen series, Small Acts, Red, White and Blue. See you then. Well, hi Tyrone, how are you? I'm very well, thanks Lee. Thanks for this little chat. <laughs> I will, it's, it's amazing for me to see somebody portraying myself on the screen. It's like, I'm <laughs> saying, hello, Lee. <laughs> I bet it's really, really strange. <laughs> it was, it was a really unique um, experience, you know. Um, I did, you know, but you, you did a marvellous portrayal. It was uh, amazing. Um, everybody yeah. did. And I was very impressed by the young lady who played my mother. Mm -hmm. That was... Because seeing somebody portray your mother on, on the Nadine. screen is kind of... Yeah, Nadine. She's yeah. really... Uh, it was, she was very powerful. You know, my mom's very yeah. powerful. So, you know, she was very influ influential with Leroy uh, going into the police force. So mm -hmm. that was uh, extraordinary. I'm looking up going, that's mama, you know, hey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my. No, on, so on listen, that. Let, me, let me ask yeah. you... Let's, let's, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask you... Did you, go, you have, um, when the, the, the idea came about to tell this story, um, were you involved in, in your, um, you know, your place within Leroy's story and, and the telling of it on screen? Did you have any conversations with, with Steve and, and in, the, in the writing of the script, that kind of thing? Well, they came to me and they wanted as much information about... Um, for example, uh, my living room. They wanted to know what kind of carpet I had, what kind of furniture, what were the curtains. Um, they were asking me, you know, um, when Leroy used to sneak over from the police academy to my house, what was happening and stuff like that. And I, and I had very thick cream carpet. I still do in my new house as well. <laughs> so. And he used to, you know, come in there and he'd pop over the champagne. Yeah, you know, because he was so frustrated about being in the police force. He'd open a bottle mm -hmm. of champagne and it'd go all over my carpet, you know. Oh, so, <laughs> like, you know so it was quite funny. Um, and it was, it was com a completely different uh, situation. So they did ask me about that. They asked me about the music of the time. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, they asked about the dance routines and things like that. And when we went down to the set, I don't know if you know, we went down to the set in October last year. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, we went down to the set in Birmingham and um, we were watching. And it was very ironic because the scene was when um, uh, Lee, Leroy was speaking to one of the youth guys, the guys in the youth mm -hmm. centre. And he's asking, he's saying to him, oh, you know, my friend, you know, my best mate is Lee John, da, 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 da. And was, they were actually talking about me. And I'm on the set hearing this. I'm like, oh, this is kind of surreal, you know. Yeah, and and yeah. then um, the executive producer asked me, you know, they were very interested in the, the, the dance routines and stuff. Mm -hmm. So then um, they said, well, I said, well, yeah, we used to do this kind of routine. He said, well, come outside. So there's John Biega and the executive producer, and I'm showing them the dance routine it was just like, so they filmed is that, is that the video that i got sent is that where you were at the time yeah oh you saw you saw what i was doing yes yes yeah because i was sent the video of you doing the choreography and that's how i learned the choreography that we did on set when, when we were filming so it was from you that i learned that choreography and i didn't know that you were actually on set when you were doing that Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Because they didn't tell me anything. I said, well, because yeah. I thought, are they going to really use this? They're not going to really yeah, use course. this. 
It's all authentic, all real, you know, real moves, real Lee John moves. It was uh, really great. <laughs> I actually, I was actually really, really nervous because obviously having seen you do the moves and then me having to do the exact same choreography, I was like really sort of, you know, nervous about doing it justice. But, you know, me and when we were doing it, when we were on the set, me and John, we just had a bit of fun and, you know, what, what will be will be and we, we, we got it in the end. So it was... Uh, you did, you did, and actually, thought when I wa- that, that that was the funniest thing because when I was watching, I thought, "Blind me, they really they've got this down. This is really good." And I was watching, you know, I think that's Leroy and me doing this. Look, look at that, you know. And I was really freaky, but it was great. It was great because you did it right, bam, 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 yeah. and you're giving it all that. And I thought, "Yes, that's it, brother. Go for it," you know. Thank so that you. was really. Um, oh my goodness, it, it it was it was fascinating to actually. Um, because not on a negative side or a dark side, but mm-hmm. normally when people are betraying you, you are normally gone, you're dead. <laughs> you yeah, so, yeah that's, that's, true. that's true. That's the situation. So to actually yeah. have, you know, your, your portrayal and uh, so many fans um, have been asking me all these different questions and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And they wanted to ask you, one of the questions was, um, what did you, how did you go around, um, you know, betraying me what did you yeah. do what was your methods what did you well what was what was so, so incredible about the times that we're living in at the minute is that as soon as i heard that i was going to have an audition for you know to play lee john you know you type in google lee john all these incredible images come up with costumes that you were wearing at the time the videos music videos you you know performing on top of the props and all that kind of stuff so i could really study your um physicality and the way that you moved and also what's great is that, um, you know, you've done various interviews, so I could actually um, learn about your history and your, you know, how you started and your training and all that kind of stuff and just get to know you as a person, not just, you know, performer and Lee John from Imagination, but Lee John the, the human being. Um, so that was really, really useful to watch interviews and, and um, see all the inflections and how, you know, you, you physicalise things and gesticulate and all that kind of stuff and just, just study it. And, but what I was really nervous, what I was really, um, I, I didn't want to do uh, an impersonation. I didn't want to, I didn't want yeah, to just copy yeah. everything you did. What I wanted to do was find um, truth, but know that I am not you. I could never be Lee John. Exactly. Um, I am exactly. me portraying Lee John. And I think that was the, um, the key. That was the key, not not trying to, you know, just, just copy and do an impersonation. Um, but it was, it was really great, um, you know, rediscovering all your all your tracks and your songs and uh, music that I heard. When I was when I was approached to, to do the role, I knew the name Lee John, I knew Imagination, but I didn't quite realise how well I knew the music, body, <laughs> just the and all that kind of stuff. And what was great is that I could use YouTube, Spotify, and I could go back and listen to all these tracks and realise, wow. These types of pain when I was a kid, like growing up. Um, so to rediscover all that as well, it was great to sort of get into the mindset and, and go back and and um, and try and get into the, the atmosphere of the time. Um, and I think that's what was really important about all these these um, these films. Uh, music has played a really big part in creating all of, all the five films. Um, so it was really great to be able to use music from the specific character of Lee John to get into the mindset. So that was really cool. That was really great. Well, music is, 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 has been the whole element, you know, throughout the whole series, as you've just said, mm-hmm. and even my career. And one of the things was that's what drove me. That was one of the things that really drove me. And at that period of time, when you talk about all the appearances you saw on the, the, the show Top of the Pops, which was one mm-hmm. of the main music programs we had, that's all yeah. we had. You know, yeah. and when you, we were given three minutes and, you know, my a and guy at the time, Morgan Khan, he would say, you've got three minutes to perform and you've got to kick ass. You've got to get out there and but you've got to be different. You've got to be original. You cannot be the same. You have to be unique. You, it was all the ticking, all these different boxes that you had. Boy, to do. were you unique. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was, it was we, 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 we took a lot of stuff from um, Funkadelic, Earth and Fire, all these groups from America that, were very outrageous where they would have a smooth song but their visuality was impactful 
And it was something that, you know, because for example, everyone would say, oh, you look so sexy and stuff. And I didn't know what sexy was. I would just be playing, doing a role of this yeah. person playing yeah. the song, which I'd written, but mm -hmm. I'd come off the stage and walk away from it. I never thought, hey, I'm, you know, like a Mr. You know, yeah, yeah. I didn't take that with me. And, and I was very, very skinny. So the other guys were always very big and butch mm -hmm. and stuff. So I used to hide behind them because they had all these things. So I played, yeah, I can be that too, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. You know, yeah. and I love to dance. And we used to go to the whole club scene out there, which was very, <clears throat> there's a Brit funk scene. And everybody used to dress because it was like the ending of punk and into new wave mm -hmm. fashion. So fashion was predominant in everything that we did, you know. Um, and the guys wore more wet makeup than the girls in those days, you know, <laughs> more hairspray and everything. Yeah. It was very extreme. But all of that seems to be coming back now. Very, Absolutely. very so. You know, yeah. I had um, some great compliments from Lady Gaga's um, designers who stole some of my ideas, like my one-legged <laughs> costume. And they said, oh, how, did you, how did you do this? And da, 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 da. I said, it was very uncomfortable, but I wore it. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, my Roman outfits, which I hated because they, every, it became an emphasis on my legs. It was a thing about my right. legs. They kept, everything was about the legs. And, um, and the more I would say to the designers, look, bring it a bit lower, the higher they would bring it up. You know, it was like, yeah. oh, everybody loves your legs, Leo. Like, oh, God. And it was, it, yeah, it was like, it got to a point where even myself, I was like, um, oh, is this going to work and stuff like that. And it was all, to be honest with you, everything was really about the stage. It was all about the lights. It was all about, because we knew we had the music down. Everybody loved the music, but it was all the theatricalness and, um, and enjoying it as well. And it was a very heavy political time. So, you know, we didn't want to be just normal and everyone was trying to be fit into a little box and we didn't want to have that, you know, that, that's, that, you know, the, leave with a mark. And I thought if I could leave with a mark, then that's half the job done. Yeah, amazing. And, <laughs> that, that it's, 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 it's great because I think that's what struck me when I was, you know, researching you as a performer as well. It's that visual element. The music's incredible, but what was great is that you look at these videos and it's about the dancing, it's about the costume, it's about the lighting, and you're not just getting a track that you can watch to, you're getting art that you can watch and, you know, being um, amazed by. Um, and it was, it was that character, you, you said... Um, we were tr hiding behind the other guys because they were bigger or whatever. But what I saw was was such confidence, such ownership of your role within the, the band. And I think that's what I had to, um, uh, that was challenging for me because um, despite what might seem from roles that I've played, I'm quite sort of timid and shy as well. So I think when I first got the audition, going into the audition, I remember talking to the casting director, Gary Davey, and he was like, you've got, to, you've got to enter the room and you've got to have the presence. Yeah. That's what you need. you need. You need Steve the Queen to go and say, there is no one else that can play this role. So I, you know, I had to build up the confidence. I got, I got, um, I wore this um, flowing pink shirt with the um, buttons all the way down, you know, and I'm, I'm not confident about my body at all. And I'm, I'm not skinny. I'm a bit chubby, um, or I was at the time. And, um, and I was like, you know what, I don't care. I'm just going to go in, be confident, because that's what me would do. You just own it and play the character of me, John, because that's what me would do. And I think that's what helped watching you, you know, with your limbs and just doing all the dancing <laughs> and just being really, really confident. Because I'm quite short by it. I think I'm quite a lot shorter than you. So I was like, I just need to be me and just think tall, think long, think, you know, and that's um, it. That's go in with exactly confidence. It. Well, exactly. I mean, the thing is, when I... I was, I was um, like, I know you've had some training and I had some training too. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the moment I'm on stage, it's like, bam, I yeah. turn on and that's Absolutely. it. You know, control, bam, mm -hmm. who, you know, if you're there, I'll knock you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we used to be doing the routines like on changes and stuff like that. And we have to do a mm -hmm. turn and stuff. We had a wonderful um, choreographer uh, at the very early stage it's called Heather Seymour. And she used to work with um, Arlene Phillips and Arlene assigned her to us. And yeah. she was very into, I found out much later, I, I learned about this, but she went to Bob Fosse. So a lot of the movements we were doing were actually like, the, like even in Illusion, da 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 da, 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 da
bah, yeah. bah. Well, Fossey, yeah. and I didn't realize this, yeah. you know, and, and all the shapes that we'd be doing was all these kind of fossey things, but put into our soul. Into, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so, yeah. you know, so good, so right, we were doing all these shoulders things, and she was always saying, like, you know, stretch, if you're going to stretch, go for it, go for that. So yeah. it's, it's command. And Absolutely. so I never, you know, it gave me that thing, right, bam, you know, I remember we went to do Soul Train in America. Mm -hmm. It was a big show at the time. And I watched, I don't always watch my performances. That's one thing I never do. But I watched that one and it was like, boy, we were, it's like, we're in America and we're going to give them. And, and I could see my face. It's like, right, I'm gonna, you know. And, it's like, <laughs> gonna, yeah. and oh, 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 Errol, you better catch up. Come on. You know, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like it was, stage persona that takes oh, over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very much, it was very much. Um, that level and you know when we do live shows everybody knows I, I'm you know you can't get me off I'm on stage for two hours or something <laughs> and they're always complaining you know saying yeah. you know, like, one more time let's go for yeah. it. You know? but for me it's always been about the audience mm -hmm. and because um, you know they they they're there for you it's like yourself they're there for you they come to see you they come to see a performance so my own portrayal of myself has yeah. to be doubly dynamic you know mm -hmm. and people want to escape so we are the vessels that they want to escape through it so is. um and that's one thing i've always kind of tried to capture so the moment whatever shy it could be a small room it could be an mm -hmm. intimate area i want them to walk, to escape through through the music through that so even if i'm wearing something just very black you know something mm -hmm. very very yeah. cool i mm -hmm. want to still take you away with me you know yeah. and, and and that was the thing and i watched you and i thought wow he has got such charisma he's i mean you know i saw you doing the um uh, judas judas in yes yeah. oh in Jesus Christ, you, superstar. yeah i watched you over and over and over oh. your it seriously i bow down to you you know thank you very you much no! <laughs> notes, for, notes for out there i thought go for that thank i thought you. oh you you it was I was nearly in tears, close to tears, because you, you had so much passion and it was raw, it was real. You were me 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That, that means a lot. That means no, a lot. Uh, what, what, what you were saying about um, uh, sort of living for the audience, really, it's, I think that's what I got from your performances. It was, it was all, you know, the, the whole package was there. It was about giving, giving yourself to, to the to the people watching with you know the, the music yes but also with the with the, the style and um, that's what was so great and I think for me um, one of the other challenges for me was finding you know because a lot of the, the scenes that I'm in 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 red white and blue they're quite intimate scenes in, yeah. you know in the living room or around the table or, or whatever with the family and it's finding that balance of being Lee John the performer, Lee John confident, Lee John, you know, from imagination, but also Lee John, Lee Roy's best friend. Yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah. and a, 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 you know, a, a family friend of her sister's son, you know, all that kind of stuff. And sort of like having the two sides was, um, mm -hmm. was also a challenge. But um, it, it, was, it was great to sort of try and explore that. And Steve McQueen, the director, was really great at sort of like taking actors aside and sort of just giving them one line to sort of lift something out of the performance and then you redo the scene and suddenly it all fit together and um that was really really great too he has a lot of dynamic i see that mm -hmm. you know and as you so rightly said every phrase every bit of wording every mm -hmm. um in the script you know i noticed you you pay attention to everything that is said you know, sometimes there are some films you see and you can turn your head and it just goes away. Yeah. But yeah. With, with his um, direction and with the script, you're drawn in. Absolutely. And it reminds me of some of the old films from way back, black and white films, which I love, mm -hmm. black and white films, yeah. that the script, you know, they'd be in one scene for yeah. like 15, 20 minutes, but they're holding yeah. you in. Absolutely, you know, and and that's what I got from the performances that all of you guys did. And I, I think what the way that he captures that is that he he sort of encourages you to to live in the moment. We did, mm. um, which I didn't think we'd get to do, but we did a lot of exercises of, of um, just improvisation. We we'd, we'd all just sit in the room and, and, 
and just assume the character and just start talking to yeah. my yeah. mom yeah. Or, or my best friend or, you know, and yeah. just see where the scene took us as just, just playing it out. And I think that was a real great exercise in just trying to find the truth in the scene. And then we go with the script yeah. and it would all be there. So um, I think that's what, what's great about Steve is that he gives the actors time to find, um, find the truth in, in each moment. Um, and that was really, really useful because for me, this was my first TV um, job. It was my first uh, acting on screen. Um, oh. Yeah. So my, my, my history, my um, uh, experience thus far was, was in theatre, musical theatre and plays. So, and and when, when you're in theatre, you have usually at least, at least three or four weeks rehearsal where you can delve into the you know, background of the, the character and you know, have discussions around the table with the director, all that kind of stuff. Mm. And what I've been really scared about going into um, screen work is that you turn up on the day and you, you're you filming the scene. There's no, there's no like, okay, we'll <laughs> rehearse it for two weeks and see how we get on. <laughs> it's straight in. And what I was yeah. nervous about is that I wouldn't, because I, 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 I hadn't done it before I, I, and I, I didn't know, I was like, oh my goodness, we're not going to be able to like rehearse, we're not going to be able to talk about character, all that kind of stuff. But what was great is that Steve gave us the time. And, you know, it was, it was perfect because we only had a you know, certain amount of time on this piece of set. We had to move on to this scene, that kind of thing. But still, there was no rushing. There was no, oh, that will do. It was, oh, we'll take oh. time. And once, when we find it, we're good. And we won't move on until we do. And I really, <laughs> really appreciated that because, you know, you, you don't want to look foolish and, and you, you want to do the best performance that you can do. And I um, really feel like we were given the time to do that. So um, yeah, it was a, it was a really um, great experience for a first, you know, for, for my wow. first time on screen. Well, I mean, that, that's fantastic. I applaud you because you've done Thank you. really, really exceptional, exceptional. Are you going to be? Have you done anything since then on the screen? I haven't. I haven't done anything since because um, when when we finished filming, I went straight into another into a stage show. So mm -hmm. I've sort of been busy, and then from then, um, COVID happened, and the whole theatre scene has been shut down, and, and things got a little bit, um, uh, you know, weird. Uh, so I haven't done any yet, but I, I, you know, I'd love to. And like I said, theatre's a bit up in the air at the minute, but screen and screen work, TV, film is starting to slowly come back to life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely sort of wet my appetite to, to, to get into doing uh, more screen acting because you know, I mean, what a first job to work with Steve McQueen on this yeah, incredible exactly. film, telling this yeah. amazing, important story. You sort of get the bug to want to do it more. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you, you know, the thing about it is, is that, that I, I, I thought he's got to have done some film before. And then I looked, I saw it was all yeah. theatre. Theater. So yeah. I think from this, you're definitely going to get a hell of a lot more work. And <laughs> because of the platform this is on, Absolutely. This is great. This is really mm -hmm. great. And, you know, all the fans, or my fans, Imagination yeah. Lee John fans, yeah. they're all kind of like, OK, yeah. we've got to see this. We've got to see this. We're <laughs> rushing to see this. So you better get your um, website up. Make sure that <laughs> yeah. like, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. It would be great to see you singing some of the songs. Yes. Well, I, I, I did a little bit of body talk in the audition just because, like I said, I spoke to Gary Davey, who is incredible um, casting director. And he, um, he sort of... I know yeah, him. He, I know him. Get, sure, I know him. Yeah, he's incredible. And he sort of, he said to me, you'd be, you'd be great in this part. I really want you to get this part. Um, so he said, whatever you do, make sure you go in and make, you know, make a statement on your entry. So I went in singing body talk in my, in my pink flowing <laughs> shirt. And I think that's the <laughs> seal the deal before I'd even done any of the script. So, um, so thanks to Gary. Um, you know, it's, it's all about the confidence. So, I'll uh, tell you, yeah, I hate the, goes. I will tell you one thing, I hate the colour yeah. pink. <laughs> oh, dear. oh, no. I, <laughs> but it helped you get the job. It helped me get the job. And, I, mean, I mean, you've seen, I'm, I'm in one of my costumes, it's uh, pretty, pretty pink. <laughs> I know, I don't mind orange pink, orangey pink, which right. I think is kind of orangey pink. I like, mm -hmm. I like yellows and golds and, and, and uh, blue. Yellow is my favourite colour. Yeah, yellow. I like, I like yeah. the glow of the sun. I like Absolutely. the warmth and the yeah. energy of the sun because it brings yeah. positiveness. So I'm very much yeah. into the oranges and the lemons and yeah. those kind of things. So when, before we started filming, I went in because we did a photo shoot in, in the toga, which I think was the cover for um, Just an Illusion. 
it was mm -hmm. the, 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 the um, flowing toga with the gold sort of, um, uh, there's like a gold belt <laughs> on it. All that okay. kind of stuff. It was incredible. And I, I used that because this was before we got on set. This was before we even started just to get some um, shots to put on the, the, the wall of the set. And I think I used that to really sort of get into character, looking at your poses and trying to recreate them, all that kind of stuff. Um, really, really helped me um, find wow. that that confidence and that sort of like, yeah, look at me, look at me. Um, so that was there's always this. There's always this. People say, oh, "You're so sensual. You've got that yeah. sensual thing." And um, yeah. that's always been. I would tell that all my life. You know, it was all you yeah. know, it was imagination. So mm -hmm. there was all this kind of because of the music and all the kind of the flowing and you know, it's like some friends of mine used to say to me, "There's a waterfall right right behind you." Right. <laughs> Yeah. So if you feel there's a waterfall, that's Lee, you know, there's Wonderful. some like, oh, floating. <laughs> yeah. But um, what, I mean, did your parents know any of the music and stuff like that? Of course, yeah, yeah. When I mentioned, when I mentioned Lee Don, they're like, oh my goodness, that's incredible. Like, how, how has this come about? What is this story? And, you know, they were really interested to, to find out your relationship with Leroy. And like, it, it seems so... Um, diverse <laughs> yeah yeah like fantastical it seems so like made up but it's, it's it was real life and i think that's what they um you know they would never have imagined leads on from imagination being best mates with a with a you know, the first, one of the first black police officers in, in the met like it, it's just so strange but so exciting as well to have that that um to, to want to see what the story was really yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's like where we came from in North London, um, and we, we were doing an interview the other day and we went back to our old school, Highbury Grove in North London. And it turned out there were so many black guys from our school that did exceptionally well. Um, one of our best mates who's not with us, he became one of the top black TV and radio pluggers for Sony. He was really, really, really good. And that was Russell Fraser. And he yeah. actually, he used to, um, when Imagination first started, he used to go around on the, he worked for PRTI Distribution, and he'd mm -hmm. go into the record shops and he'd do all these displays of the Body Talk album and the yeah. Heat the Night album. And he'd win all these prizes. He was on the ground. So he was really yeah. supporting us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was a different period of time. Everything was very analog. So, um, you know, you, you, you didn't have the mobile. So you, everything was yeah. a lot longer. <laughs> so you had to work 10 times harder to make that effect. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, bam, it would happen. Everything. Yeah. So when you, when you did something, it was really ingrained. It was very, yeah. very solid. You know, it, was, it had to be real. Absolutely. And, um, you know, so it, we had him, we had Norman Howard, there was Michael Strong, there was, there was a group of them, a, a friend of ours, Junior Douglas. Mm -hmm. um, he owns a whole wholesale company from Jamaica to, wow. to UK, you know, exports. Yeah. And they all came from Highbury Grove. And the thing yeah. about it is sometimes, some things in the media they don't really push where a lot of the our age group what we've all done in that situation yeah. they tend yeah. to, to concentrate on the youth who are not doing anything yeah and, they're, and they should concentrate on the generations that have done well and mm -hmm. they're passing it down to the youth mm -hmm. you know because there's been mm -hmm. a lot i mean i mean your accomplishments are uh, amazing where are your people from by the way so my my dad's jamaican and my mom's family from guyana Oh, from Guyana, oh, Guyanese, yeah. okay, from yeah, Guyana. Guyanese, yes. Guyanese, oh, God. Yeah, also, like, oh, Lord, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> from Guyana. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Russell was from Guyana. Yeah, so, I mean, but I, I grew up, I'm in Lincoln at the minute, it's where I live, um, Lincoln in the East Midlands, and this is where I grew up. So, um, I grew up, all the black people that I grew up around, I was related to. There were, mm. you know, I was the only black kid in, in my year at school, and the only other black kid was my brother in two years above, and then my brother two years below. So it was, and, and my cousins. So um, it was, it's, it's only really, um, apart from like going to family events and seeing my grandparents, all that kind of stuff, yeah. I didn't really yeah. grow up yeah. around um, uh, the culture at school, for example. Like I didn't have any black friends, and it's only since moving to London when I went, when I was uh, training and, and since you know, doing jobs where I've done a lot of jobs which have had like majority black casts that I've then, you know, I've, I've, I've now got loads, loads of black friends that we were all, you know, so supportive of each other and, and, and it, just, it just makes me smile when I see everyone working so hard and, and, and getting the, the, um, 
you know, achieving the accomplishments that they're achieving. Yeah, the accolades. And, and, yeah. And, 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 and the accolades, it's, it's, it's incredible because I didn't have that growing up and I didn't have peers that were like me. And now, you know, 15, 20 years on, I've got a, a whole host of incredible friends um, my age that are doing incredible things in music and TV and film and, 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 and theatre everywhere. So, um, and, and to sort of have, have known um, these people for 10, you know, 10 years, it's been incredible to see their journeys as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's great that now I'm, I'm really able to um, uh, rediscover my heritage, as it were, with mm, kids mm, my kids my, my own age. So, um, so yeah, so proud to make and proud Guyanese, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it, it was a very important part of my life because I travelled the world for mm -hmm. next year's going to be 40 years. And uh, since Body Talk, next year will be 40 years. And yeah. in that time period, even when we are early successes in the early 80s, <laughs> Um, hold on one second, my cat is doing something. What are you doing there, Skippy? <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you doing? Every time I'm talking, he yeah. likes to interrupt. He likes, he's, I what's no wrong with you? Yeah, he is there. What are you doing? <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh. <laughs> he was sleeping and he just comes around there. He's like, always oh, does it. I was doing some TV and literally I was, he just jumped on my, on my <laughs> lap in the middle of the TV show. It's very yeah. funny. But I mean, I was very lucky and very blessed that I had a lot of balance because I think when you are in a career like what we have, um, you know, you could have been, you know, anything could have happened to me. I could have gone off the rails and all that kind of mm. stuff. And, and we were surrounded in that period of time. There's a lot of drug culture and I never did drugs. Yeah. Um, you know, we had some of the friends like the friends I had like Leroy and that, you know, they, if they saw that I was going to get into something, they'd lash me. You know, they were very much, so we had that yeah. support. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I was always a, a champagne and red wine drinker, and that was it. You know, I get pissed on that, and that is yeah. expensive. <laughs> taste. So yeah. I'm never a yeah. beer person. So yeah, it was that kind of thing. And and I saw so many people derail mm. um, prior to our success and during our success, who were part of the industry. And um, I read so many books as a kid, you know, about people like Billie Holiday and, and, mm. and all the different artists. And it was kind of, um, you know, because we didn't have um, people that we could say, OK, who do we go to? There were, there were people like Kenny Lynch, who I got to know later, who, who were mm -hmm. big over here when you had Shirley yeah. Bass and people. But uh, as, on the UK black side, it was very, very hard because um, people would come and go, especially when they were in the charts and things like that. Mm. I used to memorize who was popular, who was popular. I always did that, you know, over here they're doing this and doing that. But I had to really do a lot of research and history on, on black people in the world of music and entertainment. Obviously, the majority mm. of them came from America. Yeah. So I, I really studied that. Um, I remember when we started the first tour, I started to read books on MGM, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, because we were, we were like right. traveling for so long. And I just went through yeah. all these pages of stuff and just soaked in everything. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's what I've always done. I keep educating myself. I did a jazz album a few years back and I did the same thing. I just did a lot of research and, um, and it, it, that's the strength. Knowledge is the strength. Mm -hmm. Knowledge yeah. will keep you... You know, um, I had to tap dance once because I was in the, I was playing um, the emperor in the hot Mikado. Wow. Um, and I hadn't <laughs> tap dance at all. And yeah. so I went to class and yeah. tried to you know, do my thing. And, and I went to all these, you know, did all this rehearsal and mm -hmm. stuff like that by myself and with the, mm -hmm. the tutor. And then when I went to the, to the, um, to the theater, yeah. The choreographer said, oh, Lee, don't worry, just make an entrance and pretend you're doing it. After I spent weeks of doing that, <laughs> oh, thought, oh, my, yeah, it's always the way. So yeah. um, I've been very blessed to, to have um, a wide uh, career, but also, mm -hmm. you know, my mom was always there, always around. My mm -hmm. sister was always, um, you know, like I remember we had done a Top of the Pops in actual fact, and she mm -hmm. came over to my house um, in Hendon at the time. And uh, it was like, I was, you know, we'd, we'd finish up about eight o'clock and they all came over, the family came over, because mm -hmm. um, they would screen it the next day. Mm. So I'm, um, you know, getting all my stuff off and da 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 and they're all downstairs. And I came downstairs and I'm like completely bedraggled and she's going, all right, put the kettle on then. You know, I'm thinking, 
I've just done, I've just done the TV. Back, back to reality. Yes, it's like, I never forget, it's like, I said, do you know what I've just been doing? Put the kettle on, you know? <laughs> yeah. and it was like, okay. Absolutely, so, yeah. Make the tea. So it was yeah. that kind of thing that always said, my mom, okay, no matter what hypes yeah. I go when it comes to family, you know. Absolutely. That's oh the right my way. God. Yeah. That's the right way. I, I, I feel the same and, um, and funny you talk about like drinking drugs and all that kind of stuff and getting the same. I've never done drugs, but I, I don't drink anymore because um, before I, I, I went to drama school and drama school was, was you know, rowdy crowd. Yeah. I went to Mount View. Uh, when I was there, it was in North London. It was in, uh, uh, Wood That's near my mum. That's near my yes. mum. That's near yeah. the Judy Dench, Dench Theatre, isn't it? Yes, Judy yes, Dench. yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On oh, no. so, by Crouch Hill, Muscle Hill. Yeah, Crouch Hill. Yeah. Crouch yeah, it used to be there. It's now. It's now when um, it's in. Uh, oh, where is it now? Peckham. It moved to Peckham. It's in Peckham. Yeah, last year, the year before last, it moved to Peckham. I used to do shows in Peckham. Yeah, yeah. The Kings, so the Queen Head, and the Bingo Halls, all of that. I don't know. Okay. That, I don't know. That's before, before you were Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when, when, I was, when I was at drama school, I was, you know, we'd go out every weekend and, you know, get drunk. And it, was, it was, you know, I had so much fun at drama school and learned a lot, you know, all that kind of stuff. But as soon as I got my first professional job, um, I stopped drinking because I was just, it was a oh. tour. And I was like, I don't want to be drunk in a random city that I don't know. No, know. you can't do both. You, can't you know, do all both. that kind of stuff. And I was like, I really want to take this seriously. And partly because, you know, I wanted to do well in my career and I didn't want to, oh. you know, um, make a fool of myself or that kind of stuff. But partly as well because <laughs> I, was, I was representing my family. And, you know, they've always yes. been so supportive of me and they've always, you know, pushed me and, and you know, make me, help me be the best that I can be. And, you know, was so supportive of me being in an industry that, you know, who knows what's going to happen in this, you know, industry. I was, I was all ready to go to um, study law and then last minute decided to go to drama school. And they supported me through that. And that was really, really great. And I, what I didn't want to do is um, waste the opportunity that they, they'd afforded me. So, you know, it was, very, it was a very conscious decision of I'm going to go out and be an actor or a singer. Mm, and mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it the right way and and and, mm -hmm. and you know make them proud of me and I, that was part of the reason why I sort of decided not to get into any of the nonsense and yes, just focus yeah, on focus yeah, on yeah. The, the industry and my career and, and, and try and do it right and and um, yeah that's that's decision I'm having, I'm having a great time and it's and it's gone really really well. Well, it was, I'm, glad, I'm glad you did that. I mean, in, in our day, it was basically, they would say to you the, the old things, oh, you know, for your throat, have, um, was it uh, port and brandy? Uh-uh. Yeah, no, no. Uh -uh. I, 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 I remember having some port and brandy. It was cold. I was doing a tour. And it just seizes up your throat. All these yeah. little things seize yeah. up your throat. Mm -hmm. And I've learned being on the road. You know, I have my ginger, I have my herbal, yeah, I, just, I, don't, I gave up, yeah, I give up, I gave up coffee and tea in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I have not had coffee and tea yeah. and I cut down on dairy very heavily. So um, I, I kind of disciplined myself. I think when I went to America in the 80s, there was so much excess. There was a lot yeah. of excess. They, they eat, they, 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 you know, every billboard has a steak on it. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah. it's very, very crazy. I mean, you know, occasionally yeah. you want to have a binge, but yeah they have it consistently and yeah. um i just felt this was something was not right and it was always affecting my throat and it's like mm -hmm. i have an eye into my throat yeah. and i can see what's going on i always have yeah. these things i have to try and maintain and and for me it was a you know i didn't want to be um oh my goodness my throat my throat so i'm at that point in my life where i don't have to think about doing a show as soon as i know i'm ready i have my exercises i do yeah. and then bam i'm out there and i'm doing it yeah. i'm not Thinking, oh my god, oh my god, you know, because that, you know, Absolutely. it's about the audience, it's about, you know, I mean, how, how do you prepare? How do you, yes, how do you prepare? Um, well, similarly, I have my, um, when I'm singing, I have my vocal warm, I like to get physically ready, so I do a physical warm up to sort of get the blood flowing and sort of get, you know, warm and stuff. And then um, I, uh, I see a singing teacher and he has exercises that I do. Which I try and do. I haven't been doing them recently just because I've been very, very busy. But um, I try and do my vocal exercises um, three or four times a, a week, um, which is just 20 minutes of, uh, mm. of my day, just to sort of keep everything loose, you know, not get any um, tension in the throat or the tongue or anything. 
but if I'm doing a performance, if I'm doing a show, then I'll do my 15 minute vocal warm up. Um, I love ginger, ginger. Yeah. Even, I mean, I don't even know if it's psychosomatic, mm. if it works or whatever, but it just and works. You know, and, you know, and you know, you know what's good? You know what's also good? I have, I, I, I buy. And I take, for most of my shows, I take um, licorice and ginger. I take the capsules, I mix them together. Oh, wow. And, and, and with honey. Licorice is very good honey, for the yeah. throat. Licorice right. and, and, and ginger. And it's also good for the blood and the fluids. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I do, you talk about physical stuff. Before I go on, I've always gone on. People think I'm about to do a, a boxing match because I'm always <laughs> doing all that and yeah. jumping and jumping. Yeah. And I get my whole band together and I'm doing, yeah. and you know, I'm always trying to be as physical so I've got as much um, breath control. Um, but for the last two years, I've been doing Qigong and a lot of patting. I do it every single day. Yeah. And the Qigong is great because it's breathing exercises. It's a form of Tai Chi. I do it 10 minutes every morning before I do anything. Mm -hmm. And it, I found it gives me amazing energy. And yet again, it just, you know, ah, if I need to do that, it's yeah. not a big deal. You know, yeah, it's there. It's already wake there. Up, yeah. You know, yeah, it's there. While, you know, years ago, it's like, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, you know, because I've had to sing, I've had to sing very early in the mornings on certain mm. situations. So, yeah. um, you know, I thought, and I used to think, oh my God, how am I going to do this? It's seven o'clock, it's a TV yeah. show, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't think they do a lot of those anymore. People are always <laughs> miming. You know, yeah. or they've got 15 yeah. dancers behind them or, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how did you compare our period to now? Um, I think now everything's, it's, nothing's new anymore. Everything's recycled. Everything's the same. Like one artist will, will come out and be like, well, they're just another whoever. And they're just trying to be that person or maybe, you know, they, they wear something different, but then you realize oh, it's, it's a throwback from, from an incredible artist from the 80s or whatever. And it's just, I think what was so great about the 80s and, you know, watching all your stuff and watching um, music from the period in general is that it's so original. It's so new and everyone sort of embraced this change. It was this massive um, term that people use these days, cultural reset. It was, it was different. Everything was individual, and everyone had their own place. But at the same time, it was sort of it was a, it was a sharing of ideas as well. It was just a it was just a, um, creating a, a period where everyone could just find their own individuality and celebrate it. Whereas these days, I think it's more about fitting the mold and like, oh, so you've got this sort this this audience needs this, so you have to have a guitar, you have to do this, you have to do this, or whatever. Um, whereas back then it was just free. You could be who, as long as it was, it was honest and you were true to yourself and you were, you know, your 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 product was your own. Then you yeah. could do what you wanted. Yeah. And and I think that's what was so incredible about about um, the industry back then. Now it's different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember like being on the stage and like for example. There was like Odyssey. I don't. You must know the group Odyssey. And yeah, they'd yeah. be on one stage. There'd be David Grant of Lynx on another stage. Yeah. And we would be here. And then you know, then you have all the, all the other artists. And we were all yeah. so different. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were black artists, but we all had a different, a different spin on what we did. And we mm -hmm. encouraged each other. You know, but we were yeah. all doing our things. It was competitive, but in a yeah. friendly way. Um, because we're all trying to be so uniquely different in our sound, in our approach. Um, we were very blessed and very lucky because we became a huge international act. So therefore, we represented Britain all around the world. Yeah. Um, and more than a lot of artists from where I came from in North London mm -hmm. did. So, um, and it was interesting because I would go away and be completely educated about something in Africa Mm -hmm. or you know or in, in south america or canada or whatever it may be or america yeah. so <clears throat> when i come back for example i speak to leroy and he would be yeah. talking about you know the police force and all that sort yeah. of bringing it back to that he'd be, yeah. you know it's like he loved that escape mm -hmm. and he lived through my escape going to what i did because he was going through a lot of um it was very heavy for a black guy being in the police force at the time yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there were two other guys from our school, in actual fact, that were in the police force, Colin Parsons and Nigel Greer, who joined around the same time as Leroy. Right. Wow. And, uh, yeah. But they kind of um, followed the normal route. And, and mm -hmm. you know, 
they kept they kept themselves you know they didn't, they went out just, there yeah. They, yeah yeah just heads down yeah. you don't hear about them you know yeah. but Lee yeah. I thought you know what this is many you know because where we came from we were fighters we were hustling mm -hmm. to get through um, and you know we, we, we demanded right you know I want to get through that door yeah. And that was always my head. I thought, that's what I want. Let's go for yeah. it. And, and Leroy was with me on that. That yeah. was where I thought, well, why can't we go through that door? Why mm -hmm. is that, you know, why is that a hassle, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and the higher you go, the less you see the reflection of your face. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. As in, in, in the industry, which, especially. Yeah, which I think is still, is still re re relevant today. But I think back then, you know, it was it was unheard. It was brand new. It was unheard of for, for you know black men to be you know to be given the opportunities and to be successful in that way. These days, what what is different, but but probably you know challenging as well. And I I found it as well is that people take for granted that um, you can be a successful black man. They take it for granted. Whereas mm. actually, when you look, you know, when when you look at it intently, you see that yes, you could be a successful black actor, a successful black singer. But who are the producers? Who are the people? Who are the people? You know, at the top of the at the top of the list. The, you know, it's still it's still unusual for them to be black or, or you know, yeah, or casting you know, director, yeah, a casting director, exactly. a director. All, yeah, because well, so is... so all the all these challenges. So whilst you know. It's, it's, it's it, I, and I think that's where the sort of, it, it, it's, it's unbalanced in today, is because people think, oh, you're fine, you're fine, why are you still fighting for, for equality, why are you still, you know, why are you still going on about racism, you're fine, you're all right, it's like, no, you don't, you, you, you aren't living it, so you can't, you can't see it, so when you look for the detail, that's where you see that actually, no, it's, it's not, it's still not equal. And that's why see, I'm I, the story. I have, a, I, have a, I have a phrase I say to a lot of people. I said, you know, we, especially us elders that we're now mm -hmm. classed as, we have yeah. to be the gatekeepers now because mm -hmm. we live in a rainbow tribe community. Yeah. We're in a rainbow tribe community and every rainbow has a different color that represents. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this rainbow has to be at the gate and they yeah. have to be part of the decision makers. It mm -hmm. can't be one color dimension going saying setting all that rules and yeah. that goes across the board and that's mm -hmm. why i say to everybody i said you know why do i complain because it's not a rainbow yeah. tribe i'm saying yeah. oh that person of that color is representing yeah. everything and making yeah. decisions yeah. about everything yeah. and i'm thinking but you don't know what my soul is is feeling mm -hmm. what i'm breathing Absolutely. but you're making yeah. a decision about my life I said, yeah. no, it has to be rainbow. So therefore, Absolutely. we all can have and make a decision. If we're not gatekeepers, you know, you can protest as much as you want, but we yeah. have to be, on, you know, on that committee saying yeah. A, B, C, and D, and let's discuss and make a decision Absolutely. together. If I'm going to cast you, it has to be somebody that understands, you know, I want to feel it this way, not a replica. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I find today. There's a lot of uh, replicas, Every, as you said so yeah. rightly. You know, I could sound like Beyonce if I want to because of the yeah. studio technology and because of yeah. all of you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's I'm trying sure. to find yeah. that individuality. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happens, the, 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 these hierarchy people see that and they think, oh, let's have a, a, another version of that, you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and so therefore it, it really compresses anything that you, like yourself, wanting to do something uniquely different. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, or I me, mean, all the um, all the answers are in the past. You can you can get the questions to some of your answers in the past because what we've been going through has been going on for years. And I mean, you know, even in our time as imagination, uh, my manager had to fight for me to speak on a chat show. They just wanted me to go on, do the song, and then leave. And then he said, "No." When we first went on Good Morning TV. We were one of the first black acts to actually sit down and talk to a uh, Dan Diamond and stuff. And yeah. people did not realize this. It became, you'd have an American artist come, yeah. they would sit down, the American blacks, mm -hmm. but the British blacks, mm -hmm. and other people don't know. And the yeah. moment they thought, oh, well, British black artists can actually talk and they've got yeah. charisma and they can, let's yeah. bring them through. And a lot of people don't know, we broke that door because yeah. we went on so many shows and my manager said, look, Lee can talk he can chat till three thousand years so let's get him let's get him on there <laughs> let's give him that platform, yeah. yeah 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 you know and and 
and from then on, I'm, I started hosting shows and mm -hmm. had my own chat show and all sorts of yeah. different things. But yeah. it was, it was, uh, you know, it, it was, it wasn't easy. It was a, it yeah. was a fight, you know. And even when we first went on top of the pops, what a lot of people don't know, we got to number forty-four in the chart with Body Talk. It mm -hmm. was number one in all these urban chart. Well, it's not urban, black charts. Um, everyone was playing it, mm -hmm. and um, I remember I just left home. And um, I was walking down Tottenham. I was living in Finchley Park. I moved to Tottenham and uh, got home and the record company rang and said, we may have Top of the Pops. I said, why? Because somebody's dropped out. So they need an act to fill it in. Yeah. So it was just by chance. Wow. Fate that we got Top of the Pops. It's, it's, all, it's all fate. It's all fate. It is. My, my, the, the, the job that, um, that you mentioned earlier that I did, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, um, where I played Judas, that was all, uh, uh, you know, aligning of the stars because I was going to be in that show, but I was going to be playing a different role. And then the guy that was supposed to be playing Judas had to drop out last minute. And then I got the part of Judas. And that's sort of the role that sort of like broke me into, into playing big roles. And that was so by chance and so last minute. And it is sort of like, when it's your time, it's your time. And, you, you know, it's, it's, it's fate and it's all... You know, it is. Everything it is. For a reason, so, yeah. I was going to say, I realised I actually have seen you before in something. It yeah. was the play with the musical with um, Beverly Knight. Memphis. I went to see that. Yes. I went yeah. backstage. I was backstage. I went to see oh, it. So we I are our, our paths have crossed because yes. you know, I know Beverly really well. So yeah, we came backstage. Yeah. So you were in that. You were in that. When you ended the second half. The first so, half. Yes, yes, and the, the first, yeah. So I played the character who um, who didn't talk because he he witnessed his father being lynched as a child, and mm. the, the the piece was set in the in the fifties, sort of the birth That's of rock and roll. Um, and um, yeah, my character just didn't speak, and at the end of Act One, uh, Beverly's character Felicia uh, gets beaten up in a, in a in a racist attack, and. Uh, everyone's you know obviously devastated and distraught and it's you know just the, the, the worst possible thing but you know it, it did happen every day you know back then yeah and it exactly was, it, was, it was seeing his it was seeing his you know best friend one of his you know closest you know his family being affected again that sort of sparked mm. him to speak up and, and in the end of act one he sings this prayer um to sort of get everyone to say look things are going to be things will change this this is you know this we're, we're at the bottom here but things are getting better you know it's the, the beginning of the civil civil rights movement all that kind of stuff and he was sort of like this this um this voice for the, for, for the hope of, of that yes. generation and that was a brilliant brilliant show to be a part of i, I, I love so you have found brilliant. that he's brilliant in that because i remember that i remember that ending i've got i've got the program here somewhere definitely my name <laughs> I've got the yeah. program. I'll get you to sign it. Yeah, when yeah I see it. absolutely. Thank you. It was very good. It was very, Thank very you. good. And I said it was a very strong moment. Um, yeah. And um, I remember we went with a friend of ours who's no longer with us. God bless him. Mm -hmm. We were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, Russell. Yeah. And we went and we we went backstage. And I actually mm -hmm. got pictures in my phone. So oh. I, I yeah. And it was just I was thinking myself. Hold on, Memphis. Yeah. We yeah. went, and it was a very, very, very good musical. Really, really oh, good musical. What's been, your, what's been your What's been your favorite? What's been your favorite? Well, Memphis is up there because the, the, the cast was incredible, and what was incredible about Memphis is that the music was great, um, and the the choreography was insane. I'm not a dancer, but the dancers in the show were just, I've never seen anything like it. Throwing each other around, flips and all that kind of stuff. It was so intricate, but so um, stylized and, 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 and brilliant. So I, I loved being a part of that show, singing those incredible songs and, and getting to watch the, the, the dancers be incredible. Um, I was in the original cast of Dreamgirls. Um, yes, yes. Ago with with um, Amber Riley. Um, from, from Green Pain. Um, that was amazing. I saw, well. I, saw the I saw the original on Broadway. Yeah, so, well, the original on Broadway was done, you know, all those in years. the 80s. In, in the 80s. And it, it, it took, I think it was 35 or 40 years to get to London 
to do can you uh, London that? Can you believe that? Insane. That's insane. That's insane. That's you know, because they couldn't find enough black people to do the show. It's just That's insane. ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Insane. So, it was, so that, you know, that show has a special place in my heart and it was great to be able to be part of the generation that finally got to bring that show, that incredible show to um, to, to, to London and to work with the original writer, Henry Krieger, as well. It was just incredible but also you know jesus christ superstar was was my even though i'd done dream girls before it and memphis before it J, jcs was the, the show that sort of got everyone's attention so that you know it, it, it was an incredible experience for me as well but i i you know i i'm i've been very very lucky to do a, a varied range of, of jobs in musical theater and plays and you know now now with red white white and blue um tv and, and, and film as well so it's um so I'm, I'm enjoying it and each job I'm learning new things and meeting new people and, and working with incredible um, artists. So, uh, yeah, I hope it continues. It will. It definitely will. <laughs> A little thing about Dreamgirls was that yeah. when I got, I used to have the cassette with me in my, with my cassette machine, my boombox, every yeah. time we travelled. And we used to warm up to, to the whole Dreamgirls yeah. yeah. thing. We used to warm up to it crazily. And... You know, it was funny because even people like um, Eddie Murphy and, and, and people of that level, everyone, yeah. that soundtrack Absolutely. was, I mean, like, I think the 60s, it was West Side Story mm -hmm. that everybody would listen to. Yeah. But Dream Girls for the 80s, yeah. everyone knew every single song. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> mom, I remember, yeah, absolutely. My mum, um, and I'm telling you, one of my mum's favourite songs. And I didn't grow up, and like, I, I sort of got into the, industry thinking about being an actor quite late into my teens so i didn't really grow up listening to musical theater and you know it wasn't a very musical theater household. Mm. we listened to obviously classic music like, you know, like that kind of stuff. but musical theater was never a big thing but even my mum was a fan of dream girls is that yeah, it was just holiday. Cultural, yeah Jennifer holiday it was just the cultural like everyone knew it. It, was, it was so big that whether you like musical theater or didn't it didn't matter it was the music it was the soul so um, to be a part of that was um, was incredible. Tell me what was the what was the musical influences that you know you admired? I I, I kind of um, got a hint you had um, Mariah Carey thing going on. Yeah. I don't know if you know she did one of our songs. Yes, I do. I do know that. <laughs> and I think when I was when I was re when I was uh, researching you, I, I and I was listening to uh, just the reason I was like, I know this riff. I know it. I know it. And I was like. Oh my god, it's Mariah. <laughs> and it's and yeah. I was like, oh, in a good yeah. number, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my goodness. And that's one of my favorite albums. Like that I I was I listened to Emancipation. Emancipation Mimi. Uh, incredible. So I was like, oh my god, that's getting your number. So amazing. Uh, so that was great. Love Mariah. I grew up with them, um, obviously Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, um, Supreme Motown in general. Um, boys for men getting into going into the nineties TLC, um, you know, all, all Whitney, um, and I and I, I loved it. But like I said, I didn't really ever consider. It wasn't until I got into my teens that I that I thought about singing or acting as a career. I I did it at like drama clubs and you know it was a bit of fun. But um, it wasn't until I was encouraged by my teachers um, when I was about to leave or about to go and study law that were like, oh, just take a drama school, see what happens. And I auditioned, I got in, and I was like, you know what, this is this is my path. I'm going to do this and see what happens. And I did. And um, here I am now. So, um, you know, I, and it's, it's, it's those growing up with those influences, knowing that it is possible. It is possible. You've just got to want it. And, and work for it. So, um, yeah, so we, I, I got there in the end. You did, you did, and you're still going to be driving through. I was going to ask, was there any, specific, when you were doing Red, White and Blue, because obviously it's going to yeah. be screened um, shortly, yeah. um, were there any questions that you felt you wanted to ask Lee John? Um, I think it was, you know what, I think what we were discussing earlier about what I, what I really got to see from from doing the research about watching all the parts and all the music videos and concerts and all that kind of stuff, is that I really, um, I saw Lee John the performer. I saw Lee John from Imagination. I saw him on, on stage being, you know, performing Lee John. And I think what, what I would have loved to have um, discussed with you um, on set 
was how was the difference between performer Lee John and Lee John around the dinner table. Now, yeah. like I said, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to do a, a, an impersonation. So I think what, what I found, you know, working with John and Steve, um, we found something that was truthful and honest, but it would have, you know, added that extra Lee John. If I was you should have rang me. You should have rang me. You should have rang me. You should have like, contact emailed me. You should have emailed yeah. me. And I would have told yeah. you because for me, you know, what was interesting when you on the table when you're talking about, um, you know, the St. Lucian food and stuff like that. It's so, you know, we, we, we were, in, we're always into our food. That's the one yeah. thing, you know, that's one of the situations. And Leroy's father, God bless him. Um, mm -hmm. He was a very, not complex guy, but he would get you in a twist. Like I'd sit there, I'd come to that house and he'd go, he's, he's, um, he'd go, Lee, sit down, why sit down? And he said, that's, you talk about Leroy, that's striking boy upstairs. Boy, could be upstairs getting ready. And I yeah. had to sit through this whole political thing about yeah. what the government had been doing. Da -da, and I'd be going, yes, Mr. Logan. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Logan, you know, yeah. No matter if I've just come from America or I've done yeah, Wembley yeah. Arena, I'd, yeah. I'm sitting down In, there. Respect. You know. Yes, yes, yes. It was, it, was, it, was, it was very much that kind of situation. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, and you know, um, as I said earlier about with my sister and stuff like that, and even with my friends, you know, as soon as um, we, I'd come back home, we'd, we'd be eating and stuff. It was just natural. We kept everything. Yeah. What I did was taken as a job. And I still keep it that way. It's my job. Yeah. Um, and it's the two different things. The lead John you see out there is one person, but when it's, it's, it's um, you know, my private moments, keep mm -hmm. it that way. Um, yeah. And that's one thing I hate about, about today is that um, I don't class myself as a celebrity. I class myself as an artist. I class you as an artist. Because for, for me, celebrities, you don't know what they really do in today's world. And reality yeah, television, I think, has, uh, there are some fun moments. There are some interesting moments. But then generally, sometimes they give you the wrong impression and give people the wrong reality as to what life is about and and how you can actually make it and the struggles and how you have to work, work hard to do things they think they could just go on there and bam and the survivors of some of these reality tv shows um you know they they, they end up completely disarray you know it's like yeah. so for me i felt that um it's important we were we brought we were brought in a in a non-reality sort of uh, a period we had to be as real as we could when we came home when we were there you know our in our conditioning and um and i think that needs to be stressed across to uh some of the youth today that don't be afraid of work because work mm -hmm. can be fun education can be fun and 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 that's how music and and you know when i see you guys doing your stuff and i saw you do that big routine at the Jesus Christ Superstar, I thought, yeah. wow, this is amazing. And I'm, I'm getting off on that, you know. Yeah. And that is, to me, is, is a spirit of joy, the spirit of fulfillment um, of achievement, which you've done. And it's like, great. And I, you know, I bless you and continue, please continue and go forth with that, please. Thank you so much, thank you. It's, it's honestly, the, the whole experience was so incredible. Like I said, it was my first um, TV job. So to, to, to be working with Steve McQueen and John Boyega, and then to also be portraying this legend of, of Black British music, um, it was it was absolutely um, it was it was a great experience. So um, thank you for, for letting me be you, to, uh, <laughs> and thank you for you being me. <laughs> uh, and I hope we can meet up once everything settles. When you're coming down yes. to London next, please yes. give me a ring. Let's meet Thank up. You. And yeah. um, you know, have some dinner or something like that. It'd be really yeah, great. And, yeah. and, and text me if you're doing anything, please, because I'm, I'm, you know, I've got uh, a lot of people in the arts. And if you're doing anything, just text me. Say I'm on this, so I can oh, tell everyone. You. I can also support the work that you do because the body of thank work, you. what you do, is important. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. And say hello to your family as well. Will do. Will do. Thank you. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. God bless. Bye. All the best. Bye. Have a great day. You too. Lord, may you protect your servant, Leroy. Please keep him safe from his police training. And grant us the wisdom to accept his decision. 
At least this way, Dad, I can change things. Get out of my house! Out there, it is us and them. That's how it works. Stop, please! I'm out there with no backup! Sometimes I think the earth needs to be scorched. Replanted. So something good will come of it.